Hey, and welcome back to the podcast. Brian Gerstner is here from whitelabeliq.com. And Brian has a very amazing story to share with us where how he's grown to 80 employees just in the past few years. And he is part of a company that solves problems and provides a service that many people don't want to do. And he's just uh, grown in that way to show us that you have many paths and many services and many ways to get to the success of yourself and your business. WhiteLabelIQ.com provides design, development, SaaS application development, and paid media for agency life. So Brian, glad to be speaking with you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. And I, I love your your podcast space. It's always cool when when someone has something other than just like an office and a bookshelf. So you have a, a cool space to share with us. It's aesthetically pleasing. And as far as what you have going on and what you're all about, what is the elevator pitch? What is your current focus and passion? So, um, White Label IQ uh, provides digital production services to marketing agencies to help provide specialized skills, bandwidth, and fill gap services. So, I mean... A lot of that comes from my background. You know, White Label IQ came from one of these classic stories where within our company, um, we had a problem. We solved the problem and decided that we could solve that same problem for other people in the same space. Um, so it was kind of cool. You know, working inside of a marketing agency where I originally came from, uh, we all outsource, you know, and it's not just marketing agencies because Things have gotten so complicated, you need specialized skill sets to get a lot of things done and to do them well. So we started working with freelancers and found out that no one person can do everything great, you know? Um, so we started working with agencies and it was really expensive. And so we started to go offshore and we just kind of figured it out. Um, the communication, the timing is really hard, but we found some really good partners and we were able to go over to India, set up shop, we incorporated, and we started offering hybrid offshoring services to other companies now. In that, we were able to provide like specialized skill sets um, instead of just unicorns who know a little bit about everything. And don't get me wrong, that's how I started as a unicorn. I knew a little bit of everything. Um, but things have just gotten so much more demanding in how to deliver things just at a, a really high quality. Um, it's kind of a duotomy, right? Because you need, there's a lot of skill sets needed to provide a lot of high quality, but there's still pressure in the market to make things simpler and simpler so that more people can do more. So um, that's part of the innovation. And as you said, growing from, um, in the past three years, we've grown from 17 to 80. So innovation is very much in what we do, very process oriented, very much trying to, constantly change how we work because those processes are constantly breaking and we're having to remake them as we scale. And all the more reason to have this team and to have the procedures and all the more reason to outsource and delegate. And so there's a lot of fun business lessons in what you've already explained, just this whole idea of you solve a problem and you, you you solve it so well and you get a solution figured out that you then can then replicate it and say, hey, we figured out this thing that a lot of people haven't figured out. It's to take your unicornness and to uh, kind of take the pieces out and say, you know, you can hire someone to do this task and that task and you just kind of uh, duplicate, you clone the blueprint and apply it to other people. And so as far as you said, like, you know, in a in a marketing agency, there's all these things that need to be done. And is there like a, a common task that rises above the others? Like when you, you built these teams to kind of re replace the one size fits all, like what what's the first thing to replace as, as far as getting this team from India to do the kind of the hybrid work for you? So a little bit, of, a, a touch of a spin on the question is, it's not really any one specific task. It's not like it's front-end developers, back-end, those regards. But what we're seeing a lot is a lot of companies and agencies are really kind of shrinking. So there's a lot of demand to have like a strategy, to have people who can direct and understand the concepts and just know what needs to be done, right? So... We look as, as we're working, we kind of see that, um, particularly in the agency space, there used to be this big fear of competition, right? So 
you know, eight, uh, we're the agency of record and then another agency is at the table and then you're focused on that individual's competition. And I, I really feel that that mentality is the agency of the past. You know, the, um, and it's not just agencies, but even in-house, the, the agency of the future is you don't need to be worried about the competition at the table. You need to be worried about the talent that you have. Um, if you can be really good at what you're doing, then you can build a strong position of authority. So to your question, we offer digital production services. And in essence, we help agencies um, do what they do best. We help them provide strategy to their clients. We help them focus down in on SEO if that's what they're doing. We help them focus on brand strategy. Because if you're trying to do brand strategy and you're trying to do you know, PHP development or you're trying to handle that Magento site that came in or you're trying to do the 20 other things that sound like great opportunities, you're really losing focus and you're losing authority in the market. And it's, hard, it's really hard to compete if you don't have that strong talent at hand. So one of part, big part of our pitch is you go to the client, you tell them you're the best at what you do. You bring best in class brand strategy development to the table. And then we partner with you and you can bring best in class development services. And and you're so right that there is a lot of switching gears to be had. If if you think that you can go from the, the Magento site to the PHP development to the brand strategy, I mean, how is there even time to sleep? And there's something to be said about having like that, that dedicated deep work, right? If you had someone where eight hours a day or however long, they were just, just focusing on the strategy. They were just solving this problem and not having to multitask, not having to juggle all, all these things. And so you've given us some kind of like examples and ideas so far, but do you have like a fun success story to share? Like some of these kind of scenarios that you're mentioning, do you have one from real life where, where you and your company that, that you're just growing to these these huge speeds here where you, you came in and you solved a big problem. And is there like a fun, like before and after short that you'd like to share with us? Yeah. I mean, one of the key ones is I, I talked about how we grew from an agency and we split those agencies. So once we split each side of the company was able to make decisions for their own best behalf. Right. So the marketing agency we split from, you know, their, uh, their, their staff to overhead to profit has just gone crazy. Um, they've been able to narrow down, get smaller, get better at what they're doing. And um, over the past years, I think they're probably running at about like 55 for staffing, about, tw you know, 24 overhead and, you know, running, you know, anywhere for the past three years between, you know, 20 to 40 percent profit. And I know for a fact, because I've been there watching it, it really comes down to focus. It really came down to like not chasing 20 shiny objects. It came down to them being able to stand in front of their clients and say, hey, this is what we do. This is what we do best. And if they were, because of that confidence, um, they were able to shake away a lot of the clients that weren't, that were just dragging them down that really weren't a good fits for them and that they weren't able to grow with. So the growth from that agency we parted with has done incredibly well. And, you know, from our own story, we've been growing, you know, hand over fist for the past three years. And all because of focus. And so how do we get this focus? Because you think about, okay, if I'm not <laughs> focused, do I do I kind of write down my, my goals or what I want for the future and then turn away the business that does not match that? You think about things like being recurring with your goals or working with a team. But like, in your opinion, what do we need for focus? And what do a lot of people miss or don't talk about enough when it comes to finding this focus? So, I mean, it's hard, right? Chasing shiny objects. So in the, um, I won't lie, in, in my agency, I'm the one chasing shiny objects. So, you know, to my benefit, I have people who are holding my feet to the ground. That That's key. So like classic kind of EOS type environment where you have a visionary and an integrator, um, you need this kind of chemistry inside of your agency where somebody can really help validate what you're doing. You need a leadership team and you need to be able to focus and you need people to say, that's a great idea, Brian. Okay, let's put that over here. 
<laughs> okay? Because for this quarter, these are our goals. And discipline's hard in an agency. And particularly if you're the owner, you know, you have to have some sort of system, whether it's EOS or a leadership team, something to hold you accountable. So you don't go off and chase shiny objects. And, you know, um, you have to be humble because you have to take the advice of the people around you because you hired them because they're smart. Okay, so have a system I that that way you smarter than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have you smarter than you, so, so that that way they, they lift you up versus you dragging them down or, or vice versa. And so you, you've accomplished all these things, and they seem like uh, kind of big, huge, sweeping changes, right? You're talking about things like growing companies, spinning off companies, making these kind of huge, painful decisions. And as far as you and your difficulties, your struggles, what do you feel like sharing with that as, as far as the the vulnerability and the mistakes and the kind of the, the missteps? What comes to mind? Yeah, it, it kind of ties into that, like, change management. Um, if you're changing so fast, if you're bringing so many ideas to the table, you've got to understand that you're moving a lot faster than everybody on the front lines of your company. And you have to be very strategic in how you roll out change because um, the company could spin apart. Uh, and dramatically, I'm saying that is that, like, in your head, things are moving faster. In the leadership and executive team, things are moving faster. And you have to recognize that on the front lines, the people who are doing the work, executing, really bringing a lot of that value and deliverables, they can't change how they're working you know, fast. They can't just take this idea you laid in their hands and do it well. You have You have to manage change and you have to do it responsibly. And um, I've seen it, I've done it myself where you are the problem. The leadership and executive team very much can be the problem if they're not managing change properly. And when you think about some of the, these, these words you're mentioning, like like manage, you think like, okay, it doesn't mean like it's a like a one shot deal, right? When you, when you manage your project, you kind of, you tell someone what there is to be done and you help them through and you make sure there's buy-in, you make sure that they're on track, you make sure it gets done. And so uh, as far as this kind of managing the, the the change, the change management, like what does that mean for you? So what it means for me is um, as you have to create a feedback loop because when you're working, you're going to you're going to see issues and problems that you want to solve, but you're going to bring a lot of confirmation bias into the, the solution. You're going to, this is a great idea. We need to do this. This is the change that needs to happen. This is going to make us much more efficient. But unless you're creating a feedback loop and actually getting feedback from the people who are going to be working with this and bringing that in full honesty into your decisions, then you're just creating the same problem over and over because you're, the confirmation bias is the idea that you're solving a problem based upon your own experience and your own understanding. And if you keep doing that without bringing in new people, whether it be a consultant, the people on the front lines, you're just going to keep creating the same problems instead of creating solutions. Every solution you bring forward is going to create more problems. So, you know, you have to find ways to create a feedback loop and to be able to manage the confirmation bias that's going to come from you and your executive team. If you're not listening to the people who are doing the work, if you're not listening to your people who are buying your product, if you're not listening to consultants and other peers in the industry, you'll fail. You just will because you're not going to be able to see it. And it sounds so simple, right? But it's really hard in practice to step outside of yourself and to be able to create those feedback loops because it takes time. It slows you down. And um, listening, as simple as it sounds, is hard. I mean, we work in the in communication industry with um, even with the marketing agencies and communication is not easy. <laughs> it never has been. Um, it takes a lot of just consistent discipline and practice and just you have to be humble. That's an amazing insight that communication is inefficient and it is frustrating, mm -hmm. but it is required if you want to break that cycle of creating all the problems and create the the new cycle create the new loop of you you kind of keep looking at the feedback and you see what feedback your customers are giving you what feedback your team is giving you that way you can just kind of get the continuous data and get these problems solved instead of 
creating problems. And so you've given us so much to think about and talking to you, I feel like anything's possible. Yeah, yeah. And the key thing in that is it's not just the data. It's not collecting the data. You really have to create a culture that is really willing to like look at the feedback that you're being given and to act on it, you know, Um, because people are hurried. They just want to solve problems. You just want to solve the next problem, right? The operation problems want to fix the the deliverable, but like um, it's really hard it's really hard to get that feedback and really act on it in a, in a meaningful way. It, it, it's a culture thing. It really is. And the culture comes from the top down. And it seems like it's a culture of learning. And you always hear these amazing stories about like, like Warren Buffett or, or Bill Gates or whatever, that they'll go to a cabin for three days with just like a stack of books. They, they love learning. Mm-hmm. They love getting these new insights and even like one little nugget, they can take that to heart and it can just change everything for them. And I think there that's a, a very healthy mindset, right? There, there's no downside to learning and being curious in addition to the action taking mindset. No, absolutely. Cause it, it does, it slows you down because you, you, you have to read, you have to bring in other viewpoints. Um, like I think Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, that was one of the key things I remember them saying is like, they read prolifically. If you look at like a lot of the successful people, you know, they're listening to podcasts like this constantly. They're listening to other people. They're interacting with their peers. Um, yeah, it, it it's crazy important, that whole innovation, because um, even AI, the whole other topic, you know, it's not making things easier. <laughs> right. It, it's, 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 it's creating a, a cycle where we're, we're having to produce two, three, five times the amount of communication and data with the same amount of resources. You know, it's causing the innovation, the amount of change just to happen way more rapidly than ever before. And um, um, it, it, it's going to, it's going to be tricky. It's going to be good. Um, it, it, it's great. It's going to solve so many problems, but like um, still change management because change is, is just accelerating every day. I mean, it sounds obvious, but um, you have to look at it. You have to understand that it's not slowing down. And, and a lot of what we're talking about here, it seems like there's that that aspect of thinking fast and slow, right? And especially when you're learning and when you're reading and even you're mentioning about like working with AI, like there's just, there's so much of where I'm just, I'm spending a lot of time like thinking like, well, how do I phrase this? Or how do I like, uh, if, if I have it like create some output for me, I say, well, how do I adjust this article or these SEO titles or these keywords? And I'm kind of, uh, I wish I could just speed ahead. And sometimes when the, the text flies through the screen, I'm like, oh, there's so much happening here. I'm like, well, wait a second. How do I like get this to a conclusion or how do I refine this or get this to a finished product? It's just like, it's a lot to navigate, a lot to think about. And But as you said, that's why we need to be kind of dialed in on the feedback and all the podcasts and all those things like that. And so to help us get a handle on on like where a business should go and these things that we should be doing, like how do you and your company come in here? Like you mentioned that you can kind of like step in and, and fulfill some of these things as far as these agencies that, that service clients, but like, who are you for? Like uh, what's, how does someone know if they're a right fit and a right size for what you provide? Yeah. Um. So uh, in, in essence, you know, we're, we're for a lot of people who want to narrow down and focus and they want a partner, a strategic partner who can bring best in class development services that allow you as either your company or your agency to focus on what you need to do and how you can provide the most value to your clients. So as a partner, you know, we, we provide a lot of the digital production development services, and we have people who specialize in back end, front end, the design, and we can innovate there. We can focus on our innovation and learn. So in a strategic partnership, there's a degree of overlap, but it, it's a good fit if you need to provide best, bring best in class services, and you know what you do well, and you need a partner who can either help help you grow and scale, or you just even need somebody for just just this moment for just this project. Um, but you recognize that you can't do it in house as effectively, or it's a distraction or a co- an opportunity cost for you if you try to handle it in-house. Um, you know, I know I come from an agency. It's one of the jokes is like, 
like you're at the table and like, hey, can you do this? Yes. And then you just go and Google to figure it out. But that's not cutting it because the way things are going in AI, it, it's just beating the mediocrity out of us. You know, we can't just show up at the table half baked and and think that that's going to pass for done. People understand what great service looks like now. And when someone hires an agency, they're paying you to be great. They're paying you to bring answers to the table that, that they don't have. Okay. So you've given us a couple the of idea is about the strategy. It's, it's about, just as you said, you've got all these words coming at you. How do you pick? What are the right ones? What's my audience going to want to hear? You know, it's that strategy part that, that takes you from good to great. It's that strategy part that people are going to recognizing more and more. Okay. Well, that is a lot to think about as far as getting better at the strategy and just being better in general, right? With the, with the AI and, and everyone having this at, available to them and with more competition than ever and all the communication, then we can see some of these scenarios that you mentioned where maybe a company either wants to grow and scale, or you say that maybe there's this new uh, you know, prospect or some new project that could be a distraction if they take it on and there's just more bodies required to help out and chip in. And so is there an appropriate like company size for someone to contact you, or do you take care of all sizes? Um, we, we take care of all sizes. I would say the vast majority of our clients are somewhere between 15 to 20. Majority of the agencies and in-house people we work with are up to 50. Um, but, you know, we, we are pretty... We, we are pretty flexible. We provide a lot of information on what we need, but I would say our, our target audience is typically between the five to 20 uh, people-sized agencies or in-house teams. Wonderful. And so if, if this is a conversation that someone wants to have with you and they want to see how white label IQ can help them to solve their current problems and to shortcut all the frustration and get there faster and all those wonderful things, what's the next step here? How does someone find out about your company and contact you? Well, absolutely. Um, WhiteLabelIQ.com. That's our website. And also, please find us on LinkedIn. We put out a tremendous amount of content um, and are truly seeking to be helpful in what we produce. Come to LinkedIn, follow our content, find us online on our website. Okay, so so learn and, and be inspired and see how it's done right. Find White Label IQ on LinkedIn and the website is whitelabeliq.com. And as we're wrapping up our conversation here, Brian, it's always fun to kind of jump into a, a last minute quote or lesson and you've been through all these adventures and experiences. So what comes to mind as far as helping us out with an insightful quote or lesson that has really helped you out? Um, I guess the one that comes to mind is one I just said here a moment ago is just that uh, with the rate of change and AI coming out, mediocrity is going to get beaten out of all of us. It's not okay just to show up and check a box and be done for the day anymore. Um, we really have to, we really have to demonstrate authority. Okay, so we, we demonstrate authority is a new world, which requires new thinking and new action. And if you think that you can just figure it out yourself or with the existing team and strategies you have, then you might be frustrated as the world changes around you. So to get that additional help that you need, find White Label IQ on LinkedIn and go to whitelabeliq.com. And thank you very much, Brian, for showing up and giving us a lot to think about, a lot of amazing insights and solutions. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity very much.